Hello, I am Ashling Connolly. I'm a researcher at Definity and I'm here with my colleague Björn Takman and we're here for Threshold Crypto Day in Istanbul. How was it for you so far, Björn? Did you enjoy the day? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So we had a session of talks or two sessions of talks about different aspects of Threshold Cryptography, both from uh, from Definity, from researchers within Definity, but also from uh, pro from other projects in the broader Ethereum ecosystem. Yeah. So, you want to say something more about I that? I think, yeah, I mean, in setting up this day, we wanted to take very much like a kind of research approach, but also to kind of bring in the engineering aspects, to bring in the product aspects, because now these topics are kind of moving much beyond just to kind of nice abstract idea to play around with to being things that are used in production and sometimes used incorrectly so i think a lot of the motivation was to bring the researchers together with the engineers together with the product people from both like the internet computer ecosystem from the ethereum ecosystem and beyond and i think it worked pretty well did you i mean so one of your talks was very much research focused about chain key cryptography I enjoyed it a lot, I have to say. I hope you give it many more times. Um, did you find that there was interest in your talk? And did you find like the other talks interesting from your own perspective? Did you learn something? Yeah, absolutely. So if I uh, think of the talk that, uh, the, that Johannes from Nerif gave, uh, I enjoyed him seeing, showing the applications of uh, threshold cryptography. Actually, applications I, I had not thought about before. Uh, which were around uh, components of, of dApps that currently are run centrally on, on centralized infrastructure and how those more um, management type of components um, can use threshold cryptography um, uh, to, to be implemented in a decentralized way instead of just on, on uh, plain centralized infrastructure as, as it is done uh, generally today. And I think that's a, that's a, a great a uh, great path forward to a better decentralization um, of devs running on, on any track. This is something I've seen actually kind of over and over again this week is that more and more applications and builders and even infrastructure providers are finding that, okay, now that the ecosystem begins to grow and that applications are growing, they need to do more than just the few kind of uh, transactions that you send back and forth on Ethereum or things like this. And you see, of course, the rise of L2s, which facilitate this kind of, kind of bigger, more mass adoption scale that you would hope to see with Ethereum and with the broader like blockchain ecosystem. But the problem is there that these L2 uh, protocols and organizations and companies are again centralized. So there's one centralized sequencer that batches all the transactions together to get the kind of scale that they want. And I think now they start to see, ah, okay, it's a progressive decentralization. The next step comes, okay, so we have this kind of centralized sequencer. How can we distribute this and become like even more decentralized? So the conversation I see is turning like beyond us turning much more and more towards threshold crypto so uh, it's really exciting to see and I think like to add to that point another interesting thing for us like why we put this day together is a lot of the protocols we use at Definity and for the internet computer are threshold protocols I mean maybe you can say a few words about like the main protocols that we use and like where in the stack they're used. I think in your presentation, you mentioned one thing that's used like for three different parts of the protocol. And so maybe you can say a few words about this, how Threshold Crypto kind of ties together a lot of the key kind of uh, benefits of the internet computer. Sure, I mean, you could see the internet computer as being really fundamentally based on Threshold Cryptography with every one of the subnets uh, using chain key cryptography protocols, which is uh, basically an operationalized version of, of uh, threshold signatures, um, and maintains the keys uh, like shared across the entire subnet. So individual nodes have no information about the keys, but all the nodes together do have. And the subnets uh, can use those keys then to authenticate communication within the internet computer. So subnet A sends a message to subnet B, 
and it applies a threshold signature. So subnet B knows, seeing that message, it actually really originates from subnet A or from a smart contract running on subnet A. And so a lot of these um, protocols we use internally in ICP are built on BLS cryptography, which is a um, newer type of signature scheme that just came up in, yeah, I think earlier in this cent in, in this millennium even. So it's a younger one. Um, but there's also other types of threshold cryptography um, built on the internet computer um, that uses uh, threshold ECDSA, which is much more widely used uh, in, in other parts of the overall Web3 ecosystem. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, many other EVM chains are, are using that. And so this then helps in the same way that uh, the BLS cryptography is used to secure the communication between subnets of the internet computer, the ECDSA threshold signature can be used to secure the communication with other blockchains like Ethereum, like Bitcoin, or other EVM chains. So, yeah, there's many different applications of, of threshold cryptography, even just in the Aaron computer ecosystem. But I think it can also work, going forward, it can work to better connect other uh, chains as well through the use of these uh, protocols. This is great. I can't wait to see this kind of full integration and the full adoption to see like ETH transactions and Bitcoin transactions and DeFi protocols running on the IC but transacting kind of seamlessly across multiple chains and managing everything. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, maybe one last question. Uh, like, so it seems to be that, you know, threshold crypto is the kind of foundation of this decentralized future that we're trying to build. Is there something in particular that you're excited about in the future? Like, what are the kind of hottest things that we're working on that you hope to see coming up? Like, what is your, uh, as the head of research, you should have this, like, grand vision. What is the, the, the grand vision for threshold crypto? So I think one one aspect I'm very excited about is the one that you presented. At, like, <laughs> I think the the uh, nice of you to me. Um, are going to to provide a, a level of privacy to uh, DApps running on the Aaron computer, but through the cross chain vision. Hopefully, also DApps running elsewhere. Um, that is not possible today um, because it's going to enable. Um, smart contracts, canisters running on the internet computer to have encryption keys and depths um, using those keys to actually encrypt user data that is going to store to be stored in, in uh, inside the canisters on, on the blockchain. So this will give a real boost to what is possible in terms of privacy um, on the blockchain. And I think that's a really exciting thing to look forward to. No, oh, nice. I really like it as well. And I think it's quite funny and interesting that like this one particular topic can give us pri the privacy, the trust, the decentralization, kind of all the promises of the Web3 that we hope to see. So yeah. let it... All made possible by threshold <laughs> So yeah, like thanks again for participating and for having the chat now. I think it was really a great day and I really hope it's the, the first of many, many more Threshold Crypto days to come. We hope to see you there the next time. Looking forward to the next one. Thank um, you, Ashley. Thank you.